Hello, and welcome to Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract. And in this Zim Explore, we're going to take a look at a cut and paste tool that we've made with Zim at zimjs.com. And what you can do is make a selection, and you can cut or paste that. Here we are cutting and pasting, like so. And then we could uh, create a nose or something. Oh, well, that's kind of a silly looking nose. You can change the color of the canvas as well. Uh, that's the canvas color in behind. So we cut a part out of that. And actually, this is this this whole picture, uh, this gray and the purple is all one bitmap. And we'll show you that as we go in. And we can um, we copy too. So if we just copy and paste, and there's a copy and paste. We can make an eyeball, and we can move this around. Uh, maybe it looks better like, well, I don't know, whatever. Uh, so it's almost like a little Photoshop um, tool, isn't it? You know, isn't that, isn't that cool? Um, and these things drag around, so we can drag those around. And, uh, you know, woohoo, play around with it. So let's take a look at the code. Oh, you can load in some other picture as well. Here, let's load that in. It starts, uh, starts you off dragging if you need to reposition it, but from that point on, now it's a cut and paste like that. So let's uh, copy it and paste. We'll get another ES6. And if you want, then you can save that out to uh, PNG. And all this uh, was made in an evening with Zim using uh, parts that, uh, components and stuff like that that Zim provides. So this is a panel and on that are tabs. It was made for a code pen, code pen challenge for this button set right here. Um, so they were having people make button sets of various types. So this is the one that we came up with. All right, let's go explore the code in behind here, shall we? So we'll drop that down a bit. Come on back. We're here in the cut and paste code. We brought in CreateJS and the latest version of Zim. Coming on down here, we have a backing. Now, maybe just before we dig into the code here, let me just say something about Zim Explorer. In the beginning, Zim Explorer was to explore concepts, a bit harder concepts at some, at some point. Uh, and we've also got Zim Bubbling that all shows what's new. And there's things like code in five minutes, which is a little five minutes, not much of an exploration. So Explore has since become more like, hey, let's look at an app that we've made. Let's look, uh, look at the code for an app. And in the last one, I realized it's almost a bit like storytelling. You know, you're not, you're, you're probably not following along. You're not typing along with this. Um, it's, it's, it's not because you're seeing something new necessarily. It's just uh, the story of how the code was made. And I love telling stories. So <laughs> hello there. And we can ramble a bit. We can go off and explore this. We can explore that. So I like that kind of concept of behind explore. So let's head on back to the code. And hopefully uh, you're with me for this story. So we had to make a backing. This is the uh, gray backing. It's actually the same color as the stage. We had to make a backing for our selection down here. The selection uses the backing for a mouse down and a press move. Let me show you what these would look like if we use the stage instead. So I'm going to comment out those. Those are the good ones. And we're going to use the stage in both cases. Stage. And we could do a stage mouse down. <coughs> Excuse me. There's also a stage mouse down. You know the difference stage mouse down. So the stage, stage mouse down, mouse is down anywhere on the stage on anything, even nothing. So just as long as you mouse down on the stage, it's there. Whereas the mouse down will only count a mouse down if there's something on the stage. So if you've got a rectangle on the stage, yeah, great. You press on that, it would mouse down. But if you press off the rectangle and there's nothing else there, then a, a mouse down wouldn't count, even if though it says it's on the stage. So you'd have to put the word stage in there to get a stage mouse down. But anyway, uh, either either case, this is going to be the same thing because the stuff that's on the stage, where'd we go? I guess it was up higher. 
The stuff that's on the stage is right here. It's a content container with a, rect a big rectangle. That's the stage width and stage height and a circle. And all this has been turned into a bitmap. So all that's already sitting on the stage, which means for our purposes, there's no difference between a mouse down and a stage mouse down. OK. But let's see what happens when we do this. We come back to the code and uh, refresh here. Looks good. Looks like just before, but watch this. If I go to drag my tools, hey, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> we don't want that to happen, do we? So we can't use the stage because what we we want to stop the event from going through. So that all this stuff is on the stage. So it's gonna it's gonna pick up the stage. So when we don't use the stage, which is what we didn't do. <laughs> Or what we did do, we didn't, we didn't, didn't, not didn't use the stage. <laughs> when we use the backing, I should say, then the mouse down is only if it gets to the backing. So uh, the toolbar collects the event and doesn't trigger, it doesn't pass it through to the backing. So this isn't even the backing, this is a big picture, but this big picture, this whole thing doesn't have an event on it. So the event goes through to the backing, which is underneath this. All right, but the event doesn't go through the things that we can drag or indeed the buttons that we can press. Okay, so a little bit subtle there. Let's carry on. We have our content. Now containers are handy. We're going to be, when we cut and paste, we're going to be adding what we pasted into the container. And eventually what we do is we take those things that we put in the container and we keep on turning them all into a bitmap, and that just allows us to uh, manage it a little bit easier. It's actually optional. I don't know if you noticed when we get out here, if I uh, paste this, so let me cut and paste. You see how we've got the transform tool there? So there's one. And if we paste again, we'll get another one. Uh, we can still go back to between these two Okay, but as soon as we choose something else to copy or cut, then we lose access to these guys. So once there's too many on the screen, it's really hard to start actually selecting something because every time you go to select something, uh, you, you would end up saying, oh, okay, I want to select something. And you go, oh, man, I landed on this thing again. <laughs> you know, can you imagine that? It, it just would get annoying. So what we've done is we've said the last thing that you paste you're welcome to be able to move that around. Okay, but all the, like once you then go and cut and paste again, you can't. This is just a quick, uh, a quick thing that we made in a night. It's not exactly Photoshop. You know, Photoshop may handle things differently. Uh, it has it, it has layers. So then you can turn off layers and things. We actually did make an app. If uh, we're in Zim Explorer, may as well show you that. So if we go to Zim, and under examples, there's a thing called Gen Pen right here. Gen Pen. And this one does have layers. So here I'm going to draw something. Now I can pick that something up and you see how it's it shows there. But if I draw something else and go to a different layer, but there I've made a city. So right now the city is on top and I can still pick up these two things. But uh, the, the layers layers can be switched around. So if we sit on this and push it down, then we've just changed layers. So I think if you've got a lot of cut and paste, then you, you probably want to start to implement something like layers. And what you're seeing here, by the way, is uh, a list, okay? A list with an organizer. And we're using lists with organizers in, you know, in here and lists with, or well, actually the organizer for this bottom list is right here. So if we want the hair to move over to the right, now the hair is on the right-hand side of the glass, grass, sorry. If we want the hair to go to the right side of the city, now the hair is the right side of the city. So that's called a little organizer. You can see that we're using organizers here and in a, a variety of different places as we, as we build. Uh, cool, huh? So this one's called Gen Pen. Um, you can find it on the Zim site at GenPen, uh, zimjs.com slash GenPen. And it 
approaches more of a Photoshop type thing. There's some handy things you can do. For instance, if we want to drag this whole layer, we can hit any, any layers we want to drag. Now we can drag all of those layers or, uh, or not. Um, and there's also locking the layers so that they can't be edited and hiding various layers as well. So if we want to hide a layer, you can hide a layer or you can hide all layers like that. Neat, huh? Okay, let's close that down. Boop, ba -doop, and we're back to cut and paste. Alrighty then. Uh, what we're doing here is uh, we got a container. We are adding a rectangle and a circle to a container, and we've converted those to a bitmap. So that's a new method of a container in Zim where it can take all its children, almost like take a screenshot of it, turn it into a bitmap, and put it into the same container. And that uh, is kind of handy for any dynamic drawing like this. It also can be handy, it's, it's like blitting. It can be handy because instead of having a hundred little circles in there that are all vectors taking up, um, taking up memory or processing, anytime you update, you've got to redraw those vectors. If you convert them into a bitmap, then it's one picture and it's handled by the GPU. So that can speed up certainly on mobile as well. All right, so here we are handling the select. We're making a new shape. We're applying a, bl a blend mode to it as well. You don't have to, but if you don't do a blend mode of a difference, or I think difference probably works the best. If you don't do that, then you run the risk of um, picking a color. So now it's just red. It's not a, a difference. Yeah, what if something's red? See, well, I guess I can't go over top of this one. But uh, you can imagine if things were red on your picture, then your selection wouldn't show up. So a blend mode is a, sort of a fast way to deal with that. I'm not sure professionally how people deal with it, but we always use a blend mode. So we've got a, a shape graphic. We're, we're going to have to remember the select as we go. So when we press down on, or when we mouse down on a backing, we store this thing called select X and select Y. We also clear the, the selection shape because that, um, that allows us to press on it, clear it. Uh, you'll, you'll want the ability to do that. So if I have a selection like that, now that I press there, that should clear it, and, but I could still sweep. So you can kind of do it on a mouse up. Uh, no, you can't really. You'd have to then monitor to see if you move. So the, the best thing to do is on a mouse down, just clear it first. So the dot C stands for clear. Uh, you'll see that select is, well, select is the shape right there. So Zim now has these short, short, they're called tiny API. Create, they come from CreateJS. CreateJS has the tiny API. CreateJS also has a full API of clear, like this, clear, but that's on the graphics property. Graphics, like that, dot clear. And after five years, I just got really tired. <laughs> Maybe you were tired too of any time we're drawing in a shape. We got to draw on the graphics properties. It's like, well, no, why, why not uh, just do this? Um, so in Zim, we brought in, we didn't bring in all of the long names because we never use them. We brought, but we brought in all of the short ones to be uh, wrapped in a sense right on our Zim shape. So as we come down here, they're all chainable. We can, there's the shape as we're press moving. We're saying clear it. Uh, set the stroke to red, set it to two pixels wide, set the stroke, uh, what is that, dash, I guess, and draw rectangle. So these are the, the tiny APIs are all available right on the shape object. You don't have to go dot graphics there. Okay, so we're also making sure that this selection that we're keeping is null, and we're updating the stage. We need to update the stage because we did clear the graphics there. So if we wanted that press to clear our little things, we got to make sure that the mouse down also gets a stage.update. As we press move, we're recording what the rectangle will look like. So the starting location, which is here. We don't want to keep on changing that. We, we wouldn't want to put the frame mouse X and frame mouse Y in here because then we would lose the starting position. We'd constantly be changing the starting position. So it's on the mouse down that we record the starting X and Y, and we keep on reusing that here. But the frame mouse X, frame mouse Y 
relative to where we started is the width and the height of our box. Okay, so that's our rectangle. X and Y, width and height. Uh, you could do a rectangle X and Y, and then X and Y of the right hand and bottom corner. Um, but uh, we tend to, all of the Zim rectangles are X and Y, width and height. All right, so that's an array. Now the reason why we put it in an array is I think we ended up using it somewhere else. I'm not sure. Otherwise, we could have just taken these values and stuck them right into there. So there was some reason um, to, it will probably bump into it as we continue on in our story. Uh, all right, so we're setting our dashes there and then we're drawing a rectangle now check this out that's the new spread operator there so that takes the elements of these this array the cell array selection array and it just spreads it out as parameters so that would be the same as doing a sort of the clunky cell at zero comma cell at one comma etc all the way to four so we don't want to bother doing that we can now use the, the spread operator. What this does mean is this is now ES6 that we're using here. There might be some other things. This is ES6 as well. This won't work on Internet Explorer. We'd have to pass this into Babel or something like that, which would transpile it into ES5. So uh, CodePen, which is what this is for, has, does that automatically, or it has a way that we can do it automatically. We just say, hey, please transpile for us uh, using Babel. And that means once when people look at it, they'll be it'll, they'll be seeing the uh, the ES5 version. But uh, when we edit it and when they look at the code, they'll be seeing the latest ES6. Okay. So just watch that. Also, there's certain things in ES6 that maybe don't work on on a, you know Safari on an iPad, for instance, like importing and stuff like that. Okay. Down we go. That was the selection. Now let's have a, a look. Uh, let's have an explore of the tools here. We are going to make a set of panels. And here's one of them. Probably could have, how much is similar here? Like a width and a height, those are different. Title bar is different. Background color, draggable boundaries are different. So it's really only the background color and the draggable. If we come down and check out the panels, Here's another one. Yeah, it's just these two. We could move these two things into the style, probably, because we're, we're styling this. Well, when we first started, we didn't know we were going to have a bunch of panels, uh, maybe. But anyway, uh, here's a panel. We'll give it a width and a height, a title bar, color, whether it's draggable, and a boundary. And that boundary keeps it on the stage there. So as we drag this, I uh, lost the copy. Uh, as we drag this, you see how it stuck a little ways away from the edges. That was the margin. Each one needs to have a slightly different boundary because it's a slightly different size. <laughs> okay, so uh, there they are, and there we are passing in the boundary. How we calculated that out is the margin. So it's going to be in from the margin. This is top left top left registration point. So the top left corner can't go more than the margin in, which is 10. Uh, the, then the stage width minus 90, which is the width, minus the margin times 2. And there's the, the height minus the margin times 2 is the width and the height of our bounding rectangle. Because remember, rectangles, x, y, width, height. And we're starting that off at 50-50. Now, if we wanted to, do you want to see it? We could have taken these two things, because every, every panel is uh, dark and draggable. <laughs> so we could cut those out and say, hey, panels, panel, will have these styles, dark and draggable. Then we don't need to put them in these other panels like that. Dark and draggable saves us on uh, some code there. Don't go too far. Where's the color picker? There's the color picker. Oh, 
Okay, whatever. <laughs> this one happens to be purple. So those other guys are dark and draggable. <laughs> so I'm not sure how much we've saved there. Uh, but this will, if we save this up, it should should look the same. You can see that, yeah, we're, we're still able to... Ooh, why didn't that go dark then? This one went dark and draggable. Uh, that one didn't go dark and draggable. And this one is um, purple still. Okay. Well, I actually don't know if they are draggable. Let's just check what happened to this first one. It's not draggable. And that one is. And this one is. What did we do with the first one here? Tools. Oh, we made it before we applied the styles. So uh, this one, just beware. Uh, Zim styles, you set a style and then you can create the object. So you can't create the object first and then set a style after and have it affect the uh, the object first. And that that's actually handy, uh, believe it or not, because you can set a style here for a certain thing. You don't even have to go into, if we wanted to, since this is right before the tabs, could have left all this stuff out and just said those things, made our tabs, and then afterwards set the style, like once we make our tabs here, blah, 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 blah however many tabs we could then say style <laughs> equals squiggly brackets and it's a way to manage uh, applying styles to parts of the code quite easily all right so I, I, I like that I think that's actually easier uh, I suspect but uh, what, what what just happened there oops, I'm still I'm doing maybe Hey, come on, there we go. Undoing, 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 undoing. Oh, redoing, 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 redoing. <laughs> Close the blast doors. <laughs> um, right, uh, we want to make this panel right here though. Control X, underneath the style, like so. All right, all those should work now, I believe. Save that up and check it out here, refresh. Yeah. yeah, let's see. Why did that happen? Series pink, align left, tools, panel, const, panel, any draggable. Well, we're going to have to see what caused that error. F12. Missing a squiggly bracket on 87. Oh, comma. Okay. So we must have undone the, com the comma in there. So the panels get these, and the tabs get those. We save that up, refresh here, up. and we are back in order with dark in the background. What I was trying to get at, though, is note that even though the panels are dark background, we can put the background color right on a panel, and that will override the general styles, so that's it's cascading as well here on the canvas in, in style. All right, so where do we get to? We do have um, a style going on on the tabs, so that's it for the tools. Let's go to the tabs here. The tabs are just cut, cut, copy, and paste which happens to be the third parameter. So the first two parameters are width and height. Most of the components have a width and a height. If they do have a width and a height, they're the first two parameters. Unfortunately, with tabs, often we leave those blank, which means getting to the words in the tabs. Uh, we did that. Now, why did we... Yeah, that, okay, that's how it's done. An array. We could also have passed in all of that information that was up here, all this roll background color and all that kind of stuff we could pass in as a tab object in here. So an object literal with the label. So we could put in custom labels, for instance, with the label, the background colors, all that kind of stuff can go right in here as well to uh, customize your tabs that way. What we did instead is we've used styles here. Take a look at this. So the tabs will have a background colors of a series, pink, blue, green, red, orange. Isn't that nice? And then in here, that's why we've got pink, blue, green, red, and orange, like that. Now, to make that work, because uh, watch what happens if we take out the delay pick. To make that work properly, we had to put that delay pick in. We refresh. The first tabs are pink. The next tabs are blue. First tabs are pink. 
next tabs are all blue. The next tabs we would make would be all green. So we don't want the overall tabs to have a, an overall background color of all pink, all blue, all green. Instead, we want to actually cycle those for each button in the tab. So what we do is we delay the pick. So there's a style called delay pick. And what that means is it will just pass in the series to the tabs itself. Rather than use the series on the tabs, it will pass the series into the tabs. Therefore, the tabs will see, oh, make my buttons pink, blue, green, red. So these will be used for the background colors of each button in the tabs. So pink, blue, green. We knew the first tabs were only, there's only three of them. Refresh here. Oh, I didn't say. Save her up. Refresh here. Refresh. Uh, we knew there were only three in the first, pink, blue, and green. So the next button that gets made would be the next thing in the series. Isn't that cool? So the series is running across the buttons in different tabs. All right, and then we've got the background color and a selected background color and a roll background color. We did a, something a little bit different here. Can you see, watch, when we hit, uh, make a selection, we hit copy, it goes black for a little bit. Cut goes black for a little bit. Paste goes black for a little bit. Um, we didn't do any undos. Uh, by the way, there are undos in that gen pen that we showed you, so there's uh, undos. We also didn't do any hotkeys. We could use uh, Control C, Control V, Control X, uh, Control S, those types of things as well. That's quite easy to do when you didn't bother. All right, how's our story going so far? So otherwise corner operates right. We wanted to set little corners on those. Let's make that corner a little bit bigger so you can see it. 20. And here's what happens if we don't have a base of none. Let me just show you that. Refresh. So it assumes vertical tabs are kind of being run along the side, uh, the left-hand side. That, that's the default. So imagine these things like just put on the side. They make little tabs. And by the way, uh, remember that the tools thing here, this box around it that allows these to be draggable, that's a panel. And all we've done is added the tabs to that panel. So you can also have tabs that sit out or sit on top of something and go horizontally. That's the usual thing is horizontal. But you see how tabs by default have their corner like that. But we're actually using these tabs as a, as a button set. So we want to say, no, it does not have a base left. You can also change the base. So if we said right here like that, I think that would uh, mean that they'd go the, on the other side. So now it assumes that the base of the tabs is on, on this side. And you can do the same thing with the horizontals, uh, top and bottom bases. But we want no base. So that is uh, none. And then alignment, you don't need to align by default the alignments in the center. And it's kind of a toss up here, I think, as to whether you want it aligned in the center or not in the center. I don't think it's quite as nice uh, centered there. Agreed? So we have left aligned it. And as of a uh, few zims ago, maybe one or two zims ago, we now have constants for left, top, center, right. We don't have a constant for none. That actually might be good. I'm not, I'm not sure how many other nuns we have around. <laughs> how many nuns are out there? Uh, but um, we now do have a left constant. Or you could use quote left if you so desire. It's just a pain in the neck sometimes to make those quotes. Maybe about as much pain as making capital letters. I'm not sure. It's a toss-up. How's the story so far? You guys doing good out there? This is a Zim Explorer. I mean, I'm really not sure because <laughs> we don't hear from you. I'm not sure if you, if anybody's actually hearing this. Hopefully, hopefully you are. I mean, uh, we're able to build something like this in a night. I don't think you're going to be able to do that in any other framework. I'd be interested to see you try to do this in HTML, for instance, in a night <laughs> okay. at all. Uh, but anyway, good luck. Um, moving along here, tools, that was, uh, 
what's that? That's the panel. Here's the tabs. Anything else of interest in the tabs? We're scaling them to the tools. Now, I just took a look recently at Flutter. Uh, actually, I guess maybe Flutter might be a pretty good framework for you to be able to do this, except it wouldn't have the, I don't think it has the, the ability to do the, the cropping and canvas work there, but you could probably use their interfaces to, to make this type of thing. I did see that they have a way to scale different components to different components, and I was kind of thinking, oh, that's handy. I wonder if we need something like that, and we've already got scale too. I think it's the same thing as far as, as far as I know. So here we are scaling the tabs to the tools, saying 90% the width. You could make it stretch. Uh, you could say 90% the width or 90% the height, whichever one comes first, and then you could make it stretch by saying both here. Uh, I wonder if we need a, a keyword or a, what's that called? A constant for both as well. That, that possibly might work. But anyway, that would then scale it in uh, both directions, as in stretch it. Anyway, we would just want 90% the width. We're positioning this five pixels up from the bottom, zero center, so we're centering it on the tools. And so all this kind of stuff gives us the ability to position things quite accurately within containers if we want. And uh, the tools is a panel. It's basically like a container. We're not tapping on it. So when we tap on this, this is a chainable uh, way to ha deal with our method, our, our event, sorry, our event method. Um, if we use on, on does not return the object. So if we said on here, dot on, click, for instance, call this arrow function. If we use the on, finish that off, no tap, um, then on would end up getting assigned, whatever on returns would get assigned to tabs. And if we ever tried to use tabs later, it would be null, well, it would be some event object. Uh, no, an event, I think ID or something like that. So do not chain on. Uh, hence, we create a tap. Tap is chainable. Short chainable method called tap that we just pass the function in. It's very much like a click, except it's also different and handy in a, in a good way, where it um, it's up and down, the taps up and down, the mouse down and mouse up need to happen within a certain uh, area, uh, within a certain radius kind of thing. Otherwise, it's not considered a tap. And the handy thing about this would be, imagine in when we have that list, uh, if you have a list that scrolls, if you put a tap on it, it's great because you can tap it and you know you're pressing on the right thing. But if you put a click event on it, you could drag, you, you could be trying to scroll the list and when you let go, it'll be counted as a click. And it's like, what? Really? Come on. A click isn't when you drag something across a screen and let go. That's not a click. But that's what it is in JavaScript and that's what it is by default in CreateJS and in Zim. So we've provided a tap which is more like what I would have considered a click where you go down and up in the same place or roughly the same place. And you can even set a time limit on, on your tap as well because a tap sounds kind of quick. You know, like I'm going to click and hold down on this forever and when I let up, that's a tap. That's not, oh, it's a long tap, my friend. Anyway, <laughs> you can tell I'm a bit passionate about tapping. So... Here, we are checking to see if we have a selection. So if a selection exists, otherwise the selection was made null uh, here. So if we just tap down, there is no selection. But if we actually press move, then we're going to have a selection. So down here, we're saying if a selection and if, we're, uh, if the tabs say copy, this is just one way to get access to what the tabs say. Just ask for their text. It's usually the most readable in the code. You can also ask for a selected index or a selected would get you the button that was selected. But anyway, text is probably the easiest. Um, snap. Let snap equal constant dot cache. Right. Okay. So we're taking a snapshot of it. So what we're doing is we're caching based on the... Uh, x, y, width, and height of the rectangle, we're creating a cache, and we're accessing the cache canvas. 
So we cache the container, or the content container, at the x and y and width and height of the selection. That's why we use selection down here, so we can do that. And then we're storing the cache canvas. We're making a new bitmap from that cache canvas called copy. And then we're uncaching the content, so no longer cached. And then we're saying content, children to bitmap. So at this point, once we've copied and cut, we turn all of the rest of the content, which also could include um, some, some copies that we'd already made, but we're turning all of the content to a bitmap again. So there we are. Now, uh, great, so that's if we copy or cut. If we, oh, sorry, that's if we, yeah, if we copy or cut. If we are cutting, then this becomes a little tricky. So whether we're copying or cutting, we definitely want to have a new image ready for us. But if we cut it, we want to cut through the bitmap that was already there. So what we're doing is making a new rectangle that is the width and height of the selection. It's just white. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. And the location is the X and Y of the selection. And we're putting this into the content. So we're making a white rectangle in the content and setting its blend mode to destination out. What that does is it eats all the way through to the to nothing. <laughs> it leaves everything else all around it, but it eats right on through to nothing. And uh, then we're changing the content to the child, the content of uh, or all the children to a bitmap. Because this is put now, just this is important because it's added to the content. This is considered part of the content with destination out. It actually makes a bitmap that has a hole in it. Neat, huh? So if this were outside the content, if we just added it to the stage there, so nothing here, just added it to the stage, it wouldn't work. It would cut a hole through it, but if we cached, if we turned all of the children to a bitmap, that hole isn't really part of the bitmap. The hole is according to uh, <laughs> according to this rectangle right here. Okay, so anyway, we, we want to put this, uh, definitely want to put that in the content. The destination out is what cuts a hole through that content, and then we turn that into a bitmap. That bitmap is transparent where there's a hole. Okay, very cool, huh? Then we stage dot update. So that's what we do when we cut. Now, if we're going to paste, uh, then if it's a copy, so okay, so if we're pasting and we made this copy. Right, so that there's already been a cut. Obviously, these things won't happen at the same time. But uh, the next, you know, after we've copied or cut, we remember that there's a copy. So if there's a copy and we're pasting, then we clone the copy. Ah, yes, <clears throat> that allows us to make several. <coughs> excuse me, several copies. I had peanuts before I peanuts before I started here. Uh, I've just taken out that clone and watch what happens. So we uh, copy here and we paste. Hey, there's one. And we paste again. Paste. Hey, where'd the last one go? As a matter of fact, it, it looks like it messes things up with it. So the last one ends up with a transform on it, but it's, um, it's not there anymore. So we just, when we transform yet again, the, the copy, where it, the, even it's copy, it, it it's the same, um, or we're pasting again, it, it's the same copy. <laughs> so we want to clone our copy. And that way we can have more than one version of it, uh, uh, each with a transform. So just watch that. Don't, don't remove a child with the transform on it in that manner. I think if, if we remove a child with the transform, it knows well enough to remove the transform. But we didn't actually remove it. We transferred it and applied another transform. Anyway, uh, just watch that. Same with if you're getting assets. If you have a bitmap that is an asset, like uh, frame.asset, although you don't need the frame.anymore. We made that a global function asset. 
if you want to make more than one copy of them, then you need to use clones of that asset. You can just say, hey, put this asset here, and now, oh, I want another version of that asset. Put this asset here, because it'll just move the old asset to the new place. You've got to clone that asset uh, if you want another one. And then we're setting, clearing the selection. That would be optional. And setting the selection to null and updating the stage. That's what happens when we paste. We did not we did not clear the other thing, the copy though. We could have. We could have set copy to null as well, and then you could only paste once. But uh, we like the idea that you could paste multiple times. That can be handy. This is that thing that's turning the black back to the regular color. I don't think I finished that. Uh, we, we got caught on something else there. When we hit the copy, it goes black just for a little while. Cut goes black for a little bit, and then it comes back. That's not built into Zim. Usually, usually with tabs, you select it, and then this thing stays selected. And you select this one, and that one unselects, and this one selects. But we just found it might be nice to, to sort of provide a bit of feedback there, saying, yeah, something just happened. Um, anyway, it's optional, and that's all we're doing there is after 500, it's deselecting the, it's deselecting the, uh, the tabs. All right, well, how are we doing here? Um, the files stuff. So that, what we just saw there was most of the stuff for the copying and pasting, which is probably what we're most interested in. The files we've done things on before. We did a meme maker, and there's, there's probably even uh, some explorations on that uh, and well-commented code. So we'll just sort of whip through this thing, I guess. Here we are making the panel. Do we need dark and draggable anymore? I thought we got rid of that. Maybe we undid through that. Let's go up and just make sure. Dark and draggable. Okay, so we're good there. Uh, we've got a second set of tabs, which has load, load, and save. Our save, now we have, we have a loader. So this is what we're using here. The loader is kind of like a more of a standalone thing. It, it is a button, so it, it extends a button, but it has the HTML loader button on top of it. That's the only way to hit a loader is through, unfortunately, through the HTML button. It would be nice if we could hit this with JavaScript and actually pull up this window with JavaScript, but they obviously don't want you doing that, I guess, with JavaScript alone. So it has to be on a user click of an HTML button, which is overlaid here and invisible. So this is a bit of a pain in the neck. Note that when I click that, it doesn't go black. That's because the HTML button is taking over the canvas at that point. And as I drag this around, we've got to make sure that the HTML button actually moves to it. We don't do that automatically in Zim, but we provided the way to do that. For instance, uh, uh, where is it? There should be an event here somewhere on, probably on the panel right here. It's probably right underneath it. Yeah, here it is. So the loader tag dot add event listener mouse over and loader tag dot add event listener mouse out. Those are HTML events on the actual tag to even just change the background colors. So that's what we had to go through to change the background colors when we hover over that. It's like such a pain in the neck, isn't it? So to be able to go to white as we hover, just like all the other ones, the hover wasn't collected because the HTML is overlaid on that and doesn't let the events through. So all that stuff is just to get the overlays. Here's the stuff for the mouse down. Um, when we mouse down, we're hiding transforms because we're about to upload a file. And what happens is we uh, upload the file over top of the last stuff and the transforms get left. So do you recall the transforms? Uh, the transforms are if we paste, this is a transform. Uh, I can't seem to access it. This this thing right here is a transform, although I don't know why it's not accessing. Maybe it's a glitch. Try that again. So we copy that, paste, paste. This is a transform right here. And if we load a file over top of it, 
the transform would be left there, but and the file like would come under you know, the transform wouldn't be transforming on anything. So basically, when we hit that load button, I don't know if you noticed that, but a transform copy paste. Here's the transform. Watch what happens when we click the button. Boop, disappears. Okay, so that's us making sure that the transform is cleared. And then here's the, the press move on it. So when we press move on the menu, we're loader resize. Loader resize will not only resize, but reposition the loader if, if whatever the loader's in scales or moves. So there you go. If you scale or move the frame, uh, or scale the frame, the lo it knows to automatically change that. But if you move the container that a loader is in, you've got to manually update the loader to go into the right place. So all this stuff right here, blah, 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 is put in place just because we're trying to work with both an HTML interface and a Canvas interface. And I think that's a good indication. We've been working in this stuff. I know exactly what would happen if you try and work with two different systems and have the Canvas and have HTML interfaces. It sucks. Like, I mean, okay, great. An HTML interface sitting up in a top right-hand corner somewhere, I guess it's no big deal. Even then, you can run into problems. But uh, if you try and embed HTML interfaces with the Canvas, it's going to be a nightmare. That's why we made uh, components with, um, with Zim, so that we don't have to rely on HTML components, which kind of suck anyway. Okay, in comparison. <laughs> All right, so uh, rant, 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 rant. What else did we do? So what we've done is we made the tabs work. If you've hit the tab to, what is this, backing.add content? What, uh, how did we work all this out? We're tapping the tabs. This is the save, okay. So in other words, the load isn't even really the tabs. It's just, uh, it's, it, we, show, we show the load in the tabs, but it's all the loader that's overlaid. Look at this, here it is. Located at the load button inside of the load button. So we've actually put this inside of the load button. It's invisible. And it's invisible because we told it to be no label, have a background color of clear, and have a border of clear. So that's the load button inserted into the tabs button. Usually we don't have that. Usually it's just like, hey, go ahead and use that load button. But because we're using tabs, we need to put that load button in the tabs this is the way that we did that. We made it the same size, we put it right in the tab button, and we uh, turned it invisible. But the save button, no problem. So the save button is here. Basically, when we tap on the tabs, if we're tapping on the save button right here, we're backing.add to content. Ah, uh, yes. So if we were to just loader.save the content here, uh, that would normally be what's done. Is that neat? You got the loader will uh, all you do is say save, and whatever whatever uh, container you want to save as a picture, there it is. Loader dot save, and it will save it out. You've got a couple other options too. You can choose a file name and a few other things there, dimensions, what kind, PNG, JPEG. Um, if we did that though, the transparent parts, so the parts that were cut out, will be transparent. And the end user may not expect that. So you then go to view that picture and you've got, I don't know, it just takes the background color of whatever you're viewing it on. So that might not be expected. So what we've done is we've taken the backing and we've added it to the content at the bottom level of the content. And then we save it, and what that does is it takes a snapshot, but with the content in it, or sorry, with the um, with the backing added to the content. So now well, whatever we were actually seeing at the time is the image that is saved, and then we take that backing and we put it back on the stage at the back. What that does mean is when we go to do the colors, we've got to make sure that we keep the backing uh, up to date. So down below here where we're doing the colors, boop, 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 color pickers, no problem. We just make sure that we set the backing color and the frame color to the picker's selected color. 
Okay, so that's what's going on with the color picker. Anytime we change that, we've passed in three different colors uh, there. Whenever we change those, we change the frame color of that. Because when you cut it, remember when you cut it, it actually goes and sees right through to the frame. So if we had the frame color always one color, when you cut that, it goes right back to the frame, or it goes right back to the canvas itself. You got to make sure that that color is adjusted. And then um, uh, the backing color as well, so that when you make a save, that, that it's uh, up to date. Great. Well, I think that this has been a pretty good explorer so far. Anything else that we're missing? Yeah, maybe the, the end of the loader, like how does the loader actually do its thing? We, we just saw how saving does its thing, and then that turns it back to black. Let's see how the loader does its thing. Like I said, we've seen the loader before, but on loaded, we collect an, an event object. We remove all the children from the content. So now the content has no children. We take the bitmap, we center it on the contact. So e.bitmap is uh, by default the last bitmap loaded. You can also handle multiple bitmaps. So e.bitmaps is an array of all of the, the pictures loaded. So then you could work with those. But e.bitmap will be a reference to the last one loaded. Do we want them only to be able to put one picture in there? So e.bitmap, e we center it. Um, maybe they don't want it centered. Maybe they want it top left aligned. Uh, no, no big deal. We kind of threw in a drag there. This is suspect. You know, we might want a panel that pops up saying, drag your picture to where you want it, and then hit save. And then from then on, you can cut and paste. But what we did is we said, hey, we'll let them drag it once. And then when you press up on that drag, we will say, now you can't drag. So we're running that event after, like this, this happens, this press up will only happen once. And uh, then it deletes itself. So that's... Uh, create js thing on the on method means run this event once and then that's it and we update the stage so that's neat that means when we up upload content here as we did with the es6 let's uh, load some content here oh, es6 again the very first time this is draggable so you better get it right maybe you wanted it there Boom. And then after that, it's no longer draggable. You move into the app itself with the cut and paste. All right, ladies and gentlemen, woot woot. The last thing was the color picker there uh, down here, but I think we already talked about that. And we hit the viewport. Do you know what that means? Oh yeah, do you? Do you, do you, do you, do you? Do you know what it means? It means we're at the end of our exploration here at Zim Explore, zimjazz.com. Come and join us at zimjazz.com slash slack if you want to hang out with us. And when you do join us in Slack, for goodness sake, look at your message. I always greet everybody who comes. You know, if I say, hey, how's it going? Have you coded with Zim before? You know, talk to me. I'm a real person. We're real people there. We want to talk. So don't just come join. Come join and like say things. Okay. Ciao. Have a great night. Bye.